Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be discussing playing Far Cry 5 on Shadow's Cloud Gaming platform. I'm going to be throwing some benchmarks at you guys with the Ultra preset as well as some benchmarks with a custom uh, quality settings that I used to try to optimize the settings for a very solid experience that's a little bit closer to that go line of 1080p at 60fps. So guys, without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right to it. To begin today's video, I wanted to share my quality settings for my custom preset for Far Cry 5. One thing I wanted to note here though is it seems that Far Cry 5 is pretty well optimized and what I mean by that is you have to make a pretty big graphical fidelity decrease uh, to get a relatively small performance increase. So as you can see here, to get about a, I think it was roughly around a 10 FPS jump, I had to make quite a bit of sacrifices with a, a, quite a few settings actually turned all the way down to low. So it's up to you whether the graphical fidelity loss is worth the extra frames, uh, but since Far Cry 5 is so heavily focused on the single player campaign, for me personally, I would just prefer to play on the Ultra preset simply because the graphics in Far Cry 5 are so fantastic. Uh, I would prefer to have the better quality uh, of the graphics than have a couple extra frames. But that just might be me, me personally and your mileage may vary. So if you are uh, more keen on getting that 1080p 60fps experience, these are the quality settings that I used and we'll get to the specs here in a little bit of what the, the what these adjustments actually gained you and you can determine whether it's up to you, whether it's worth it or not. And of course, these are just kind of starting points. You can adjust your settings yourself and get to a point where you're happy with the graphical fidelity and the frame rate at the same time. So some good starting points if you are more keen on getting that 60 FPS experience. All right, so moving on to the minimum, maximum, and average frame rates. You can see here what I was referring to earlier when I said you had to take a pretty substantial quality decrease for a relatively minor performance increase and me personally once again i would just play on the ultra preset but it's totally up to you if you wanted to uh, try to get a little bit closer to that 60 fps go line and start, try to adjust your quality settings the other thing i wanted to talk about here on this graph is the minimum frame rates that you see here which are pretty low and look pretty horrible at first glance uh, and this is definitely an issue, um, but it's a very rare issue. So it's definitely something that's not going to impact your overall experience, really, in my opinion. But you do have the occasional dip. I don't know if it is possibly due to the storage system uh, where, where you're loading in uh, a higher level of detail for a large object in the distance as you're kind of approaching it. I don't know exactly what is causing these dips, but... Actually, when you move on to the next slide, I take a seg random segment from my playthroughs, a two minute segment and map the frame rates for the next slide. And we actually didn't see these dips at all during that random two minute segment of gameplay. So that goes to show that these errors are pretty ra uh, random and pretty rare at the same time. And I'm recording this on May 31st and on June 1st, Shadow is going to start rolling out their new massive upgrade, which improves both the performance and the CPU. So it'd be interesting to see if that helps uh, with these rare dips that we do encounter. Uh, and it's quite possible that it could be something with the storage system that is causing this issue, and it may go away here in the near future. And once again, those rollouts and those updates won't be a you know, one day and they'll automatically, everybody will have those. It'll start rolling out in June and it might take a couple weeks or it might take a couple months. We don't know the exact time frame at this point in time. Moving on to the final benchmark for today's video, we have a two minute segment of gameplay for both the Ultra preset as well as my custom optimized preset uh, for Far Cry 5. And I had a couple takeaways from what I learned from this benchmark. The first of which is in a random two minute segment of gameplay from both the ultra preset as well as the custom preset, we didn't actually see that very harsh dip 
at all that we saw in the previous slide. So it does go to show that that is a very rare issue that does pop up. And while it is an issue, it is pretty darn rare if it doesn't show up in two minutes of gameplay from two different actual playthroughs uh, with different quality presets. The other takeaway that I had here is the custom preset, while it does have a better average frame rate, it does seem to be a lot more sporadic or less um, consistent with the frame rates. You have a lot different, a lot more difference between your peaks and your average lows, uh, which does provide a less consistent experience. So that's going kind of a little bit more fuel, uh, for my opinion, for having a single player experience that is more consistent. I would once again just stick with the ultra preset to be 100% honest here. So for the final segment, I was just going to give some general thoughts of the overall experience because I feel that we've covered the code hard facts pretty well in the previous segments by going over the performance benchmarks. So all in all, I think Shadow does a great job of playing Far Cry 5, even with the ultra preset with an average FPS of around 47. That is still very respectable and still very playable in my opinion. And for a single player game, I don't think having the super high frame rates is as high of a focus. And all in all, I do think it's a very playable experience. I didn't notice any weird issues with Far Cry 5 on Shadow, no mouse issues. Um, the streaming client was very responsive. I didn't really notice much latency despite uh, the Shadow server being in California and I am in Missouri, which is halfway across the United States. So it's a pretty impressive di distance. And I really didn't notice much latency at all from the connection. So all in all, a very good experience overall and definitely is something I would highly recommend. Uh, there are a couple things with the performance. It wasn't as good as we saw with GeForce Now, but very respectable all in all and a great experience overall. So you've reached the end of today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. I do greatly appreciate the support you guys give. So like, subscribe, uh, share this video with whoever you think might be interested in it. Once again, guys, I do greatly appreciate your support. And until next time, Zach out.